For quite a while, I felt that Valheim needs more defensive options. So this mod is an effort to add some more choices for pieces to defend your bases. The first entry is these steampunk turrets. If you're only interested in seeing how the mod works and what it does, the intro covers that for now. The rest of this video is going to be focused more around um, how people can make a similar mod or modify my code to fit their liking. If you'd like to add a turret without writing any code, I'm also going to cover how you're able to do that. This project was created from the JVL mod stub template. So in addition to the code for the mod, it also includes a Unity project containing the models with scripts attached for the asset bundle exports. This is doable because the Unity project doesn't actually contain the base game assemblies, only meta files that refer to scripts within the assemblies. If you want to take my code and make modifications or follow along with this guide, you will need to move the base game assemblies into the corresponding assemblies folder in the Unity project. I will link those locations below, but for reference here in the video, it's inside More Defenses Unity, Assets, Assemblies. You won't see these DLL files, you will only see the meta files and will need to add your own DLLs. After doing this, you can go back to the More Defenses Unity directory, add this directory to your Unity Hub, and you will be able to open the project inside of Unity. Looking inside the Unity project, I have organized the assets into underscore project for the main project, just so that it stays at the top of the assets list. Assemblies to hold the base game assemblies, and then third party to include any free or paid assets. Of course, I can't upload the paid assets to my GitHub, but I've included links to the metadata, and if you'd like to use the same assets, they should be able to be added also. Right now, the only thing I'm using is Super Screenshot, which I'll link in the description as well. It's 10 bucks on the Unity store and just makes it extremely easy to take pictures of the assets you create with transparent backgrounds to turn into sprites for their hotbar icons. Going into the prefabs folder, you'll see that there are a couple prefabs here. The basic turret is the first turret that I've added into the mod. If you look over on the right, you'll see it contains a box collider, as well as a few scripts from the base game and an audio source. These scripts can be easily added to any prefabs that you create by clicking add component and then looking for whatever script that you want to add from the base game. The audio source is included here just so that I could add a gunshot sound that plays whenever the turret fires. Finally, I also added a particle system to the turret, and this serves as a muzzle flash that also plays when the turret fires. I'm not going to go too much into creating particle effects in this video, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask, or I'll try to link a short guide on that below as well. Looking at the code, you'll see that the asset bundle loading system uses a dynamic approach similar to my airships mod. This means that you can add a new asset bundle and corresponding configuration under assets, asset bundles, and configs respectively, and you will get a new turret in game without having to modify any code at all. So if we go into the config file here. This is the one I've added for the basic turret. You'll see that there are a few required properties that JVL uses to load pieces into the game, as well as a few custom properties, including fire interval, damage, and range for the turret. If I add more turret types, I'll try to expand this out to let you set additional options within the game. To give a little more detail on how these configs are turned into pieces in game, 
JVL supports simple JSON, which lets you take a JSON file and load it into models that can be used for game objects. So looking in our models folder, we'll see a turret config, which includes the properties that are listed in the JSON file, as well as a conversion method to turn these properties into a custom piece for JVL. Going back to the main mod file, you'll see that in addition to adding the custom piece, the turret range, damage, and fire interval can be set by targeting the turret component that gets added to the piece prefab. For the turret code itself, it is added to the piece as a separate mono behavior with a few public variables that can be set. I'm not going to go too heavily into all of the logic here, but basically the turret checks on an interval to see if any enemies have gone into its firing range. This is done by loading the character list that already exists in Valheim and checking the distance to each target, very similarly to how the in-game monster AI already works. At that point, the turrets will check if the targets are visible by drawing a ray with this mask. The mask is set to see if the turret has a line of sight on the target, and if so, it will fire using an RPC that gets called on all connected clients, meaning that each client will individually turn the turret towards its target, play the audio cue, and trigger the particle system for the muzzle flash. In addition, it will invoke the damage RPC on the target enemy, and the target enemy will take damage. These RPCs can only be called if the turret belongs to the specific client. This is to make sure that the turret is owned by that client. It's a concept ingrained in Valheim so that you don't have multiple clients trying to control scripts at the same time. One final thing I want to talk about in this script is that the target finding method is actually called as a coroutine. This is done because the game pretty much doesn't need to know what target the turret wants to fire at um, in the same exact frame, and coroutines can run across multiple frames. This is to help with performance, since waiting for all the turrets to try to find their target before the next frame gets painted is um, a bit unnecessary. Um, I don't know if this needed to be done, but I wanted to play around with it, and I'll see in the long run if this helps with performance or not. One complaint I had with the Airships mod was the volume and repetitiveness of the sound of the small ship's engine. So for this mod, I have hooked the gunshot sound into the base game's audio mixer which means it will respect the sound effect volume when you set it in game. In addition, I have provided a config entry that gets called um, using the event system to individually set the turret's volume as well. To set something like this up, all you need to do is add a config entry to your main mod file and bind it to some value in your awake method then inside whatever script you want to react to that config change, we'll add a handler that gets added to this event. In my case, I just want to call this set volume function whenever the config entry is changed, and that will cause the audio source to have its volume adjusted accordingly. I don't know if I covered everything here, but if I think of anything else important, I'll try to add it to the description, or feel free to reach out to me anytime on Discord or in the comments, and I'll answer any questions you have. Hopefully you find this mod interesting and enjoyable. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.